Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sven and I hope you're doing great. Display rendering transforms, or DRTs, have become quite a popular topic in the last couple of months. We heard Colin Kelly talk about them, Darren Mostyn, a lot of people here on YouTube showcased some new DRTs in their recent uploads. But I found some important details missing in most videos, so let's go ahead and take a look. Before we begin, let's quickly get a few terms out of the way so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Each color space consists of a gamut and a certain transfer function. Resolve also falsely calls those gamma, but let's stick to the term transfer function. So the gamuts would be Ari White Gamut, DaVinci White Gamut, Rec709, P3, etc. And the transfer functions are Ari Log C, DaVinci Intermediate, Gamma 2.4 and SD2048 for example. Some are really big and very useful as working color spaces, and others are quite small and represent what certain displays can actually show. And if you want to know more about this topic, I have a bunch of videos on my channel where I go into the details of how these work. Now, when we use color management, we have to convert color spaces from one to another, and there are two important differences. A simple color space transform only converts the gamut and the transfer function, and if necessary, the white point, and that's it. It is useful for converting a camera's color space to a working color space. A DRT, on the other hand, also applies additional tone mapping, which is a method of compressing values from a big color space into a smaller one. It also applies clamping so details can be lost, but that's fine, since you don't apply anything after the DRT anyway. It is the final step in the color management pipeline that gets us from our timeline to the display, and that's why it's called Display Rendering Transform. So if you haven't heard about DRTs before, you should really check out the videos by Colin and Darren, and I put the links in the video description. As an example, if the timeline is in every white gamut look CV3 and our display is set to Rec 79 Gamma 2.4, we can simply use the official ARRI LUT, which is our DRT in this case. This would give us an image the camera manufacturer intended. If we however simply converted the color space without any form of tone mapping, we would get a completely different result with extremely crushed highlights and high oversaturation. We can still use the color space transform OFX as a DRT in DaVinci Resolve, but if we do, we should actually enable the tone mapping, which prevents our highlights from clipping, and also the forward UOTF, which modifies the Gamma 2.4 curve slightly to match with the Rec. 709 BT8086 specifications. So compared to the Ari LUT, we get a similar result, but you can already see that they are different, and we'll get to that in a minute. Now, there are already a few different color management systems out there, and therefore also a few different DRTs. Resolve, for example, offers several tone mapping methods such as luminance mapping and DaVinci mapping. There's also ACES, which recently introduced a new method in ACES 2.0. There are third-party DRTs in the form of DCTLs that you can download. We also saw the ARI LUT earlier, and ARI introduced the new ARI Reveal color signs a few years ago, which looks slightly different. So the market is already quite crowded, which is a bit of a problem for collaborative workflows, but we'll get there in a minute as well. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering if a DRT has to be a DCTL, a plugin, or an image shader by any means, no. A DRT can also exist in the shape of a LUT as we saw earlier, there's nothing wrong with that per se. Essentially, every camera manufacturer has at least one LUT that acts as a DRT. And the difference between a LUT and the mathematical transforms it was built on is actually so incredibly small that it doesn't matter in this scenario. So besides the LUTs by the camera manufacturers and the built-in color management systems in Resolve, there are actually some third-party DRTs that you can install as DCTLs on your machine. So you would need the studio version of Resolve, because DCTLs are not supported in the free version. The most popular ones are JP2499 and OpenDRT, and we have heard a lot of people talk about those two in recent times. OpenDRT just came out with a new update that allows you to modify the image rendering with a few presets, and JP2499 as well has some sliders that let you adjust how colors are displayed. So, which one is better? What are the benefits of each? I'll let you decide, but let's first compare some of the DRTs we have at our disposal. So, here we can see a few different DRTs on the same image. As you can tell, each one looks somewhat similar, but of course there are some differences that can influence the decision which one to choose. The important part to remember here is that each one is essentially doing the same thing, just in slightly different ways. They are all converting the timeline color space to the display color space, and they are all applying some sort of tone mapping, and it is the tone mapping, however, that is different in each method. So, for example, with ACES 2.0 compared to ACES 1.3, we can see how they got rid of the extreme contrast and the hue shifts, as well as oversaturation and clamping of highly saturated colors. Everything rolls off much smoother, and overall, the rendering feels way more pleasing. We compare this to the DaVinci tone mapping and the color space transform OFX, and we see way more saturation here, especially in the lower mid range. Ari Reveal, for example, pushes the darks a bit down and takes out some saturation in the blacks and whites. 
OpenDRT, on the other hand, feels a tiny bit more dull and desaturated compared to the other options. By the way, this is not a bad thing per se, it means that this is more like a technical transform than one with a distinct creative flavor. And if you'd want a more filmic, very strong look with lots of color density, you would need to grade the image before to get there. JP2499, on the other hand, has some of those filmic aesthetics already built in. Now, if you look at what other camera manufacturers like Sony, RED and Blackmagic Design do, we can see two, in my opinion, very annoying things happen right away. There's not one single LUT, there's a full folder of transform LUTs for each and every color space. This simply stems from the fact that each of the cameras records in a different color space and you would need a special conversion LUT for each one. But also this means that you can't really tell what their intent in designing a DRT is. You know, Ari for example has always been known for designing DRTs that make the image feel filmic. It is inspired by analog film. They take a lot of care about highlight roll-off and pleasing but natural looking image rendering. For Sony, there is already something in the look that feels digital, desaturated and also just overall not as pleasing. And the same is true for RED, which has a terrible contrast curve and way too many LUTs to begin with, like, what is this? And Blackmagic Design isn't any better here with all the countless choices you can make. So with all of that in mind, which DRT should we use? What should we do? The simple answer is, it depends, of course, because why should there be an easy answer? Let's think about the past before color management systems were as popular as they are today. The way we could get a log image to display was to use a LUT. And there were countless LUTs created with certain looks, and people started selling LUT packages online, and in general there was just a huge amount of options available. With color management systems like ACES and RCM, we experience a certain movement of standardizing image rendering, especially ACES, which is available not only in Resolve but basically any other software used in post-production, we could experience the benefits of color management for collaborative workflows. You see, in post there are way more people involved in the show than just the colorist. There's VFX, title design, mastering, archival. They all benefit from having standardized color transforms and DRTs available no matter which software they are using. To be fair, ACES is the only system that shines here, but my point is, with all of these options of DRTs we see appearing each day, there is less and less standardization. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you shouldn't use third-party DRTs at all. That's what I meant earlier when I said it depends. There are projects that don't require a huge collaborative workflow. Maybe there's just one colorist who's also the editor and DOP, and you only deliver to one display. That's fine, it happens all the time, you could technically use any tool for the DRT you want. However, on the other end of the spectrum, there are shows that have to be graded for theatrical releases. HDR and SDR with tons of VFX and title design. Those shows are going to get archived in scene referred color spaces for potential later use. I guess you get it. Those projects need some sort of standard because there are just so many people involved. You want to make everyone's life easy and you want to make sure you're using a system that is future proof. I would much rather grade with a DRT like ACES or Ari Reveal and do the creative work with color grading tools than choosing a third-party DRT for creative decisions that is unavailable to most other people. Also, we are running into the danger that more and more people develop their own DRTs and sell them online. Essentially, recreating the market we had for LUTs just a few years ago. The problematic point about this was that the quality of those LUTs oftentimes was not at all good, and people spent way too much money for essentially nothing. A DRT especially is way more complex and should be designed not only for one display, but multiple. It should take multi-format deliveries and collaborative workflows into account, it should be available for different programs and platforms, so a developer should be someone you can trust, who has done his research and spent a lot of time engineering the DRT, not somebody who just implemented an S-curve formula into a DCTL that accidentally darkens the image by two-thirds of a stop and calls it a day. And yes, I have already seen something like this. So what's the right DRT for you? Well, I guess you have to find out for yourself. Each one comes with a certain aesthetic, as we saw earlier. You might like the flatter and more technical look of OpenDRT, or the natural but still filmic rendering of Ari Reveal. You might enjoy the benefits of ACES, or just like the saturation you get from Resolve's color space transform OFX. Those are decisions that you have to make up for yourself. As long as you stress test your tools and check how well they behave in edge cases, you're good to use any of these. If you want to find out how I stress test LUTs, you can watch the video linked above, and if you want to get my generated DCTL that outputs test patterns, you can check the link in the video description. Those test patterns can be used to evaluate the quality of LUTs and DRTs, but also can help you stress test other tools in Resolve. Again, the tool is available on my website and you can download it for free or pay what you want. So let me know your thoughts on DRTs in the comment section below this video. I'm really looking forward to your opinions. And if you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing to not miss other upcoming episodes. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.